I want to thank those great patriots who turned out in rain. It was chilly. It was windy at bookends in Ridgewood and Barnes & Noble in McLean, Virginia. I want to thank you all. It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Well, except for one guy, but I'm not going to get into that. But it was a pleasure to meet all of the rest of you. And just fantastic patriots, as nice as can be. Again, I want to thank you very, very much. And uh, obviously, most of you can't be in these two places. And I want to thank you folks, too, for, uh, for your patriotism and your effort to spread the word, to read things you may not have known about before. To, you know, the great thing about conservatives generally, and particularly here, is that you folks in this audience, you want to be informed. You want to learn as much as you can. You want to participate. You want some role in saving this country. Even if it's not some formal role with some group and so forth. You want to be able to have discussions over the holidays with your family members and your neighbors. Maybe you're walking your dog and your friends and so forth. And so this is the book, The Democrat Party Hates America, that will help you advance our cause and liberty because the goal has to be to crush this, this very evil entity that really isn't even a political party. It is a, it is a state-run party that owns the bureaucracy, that owns the media, and is destroying the country. So I can't thank you enough, those of you who want to get more informed as, or as informed as much as possible, and I've been, I want to thank all the affiliates and others that have uh, participated in this great effort, this movement. Just so many fantastic hosts. Local hosts, national hosts, just terrific. Uh, I cannot thank you folks enough, really. And uh, I do now six to eight interviews a day. I still do my two Fox shows. I still do my two Blaze TV shows. And, of course, my most important show, this one. So uh, extraordinarily busy. Very excited about what's going on. I must tell you, though, there is this, what is her name? Cassidy Hutchison. The left is pushing the hell out of her book. The media are pushing the hell out of her book. And it's full of gossip crap. It's just loaded with it. And you see these books come from time to time, Bob Woodward or Sky Wolf and the rest, and they're, they're flashes in the pan, but they hit hard. And so they're being pushed very hard at MSNBC and CNN. And the things that she says are so sophomoric and stupid. On the other hand, some of them are very, very serious. And you have to ask yourself, well, why were you waiting for your book? Because she's a grifter, that's why. This book is about her and what she wants you to believe is her life in the Trump White House. It is scurrilous. It is dim-witted. Maybe she wrote it, maybe she didn't. Obviously, she had to participate in it. But it's being pushed by Rachel Maddow and MSNBC. It's being pushed by CNN. It's being pushed by the New York Times and the Washington. But that's the nature of the beast. So that's what I'm up against. This book's been out for eight days. And you haven't heard peep from the left. Not a word. Now, why is that? Well, what are they going to say? Is there some fact that they want to dispute? There's literally thousands of facts in this book. Is there some end note they want to challenge? Is there some historical point? Some audio that I transcribed? Some notes that were written way back when, 120 years ago, that they want to challenge? Apparently not. So if there is to be an attack, it'll just be a personal attack. Or a diversionary attack. But so far, they've laid off. Because they do not want to engage. I am here. I am ready to engage. And that's why it's a powerful, powerful book in so many respects. And that's why I hope you'll take advantage of it before I stop talking about it, before it's not on the shelves anymore. Books don't last forever. Not in this uh, 
Not in this environment. There is a big story. There are many big stories. I want to jump right in, and I also uh, want to thank my buddy Ben Ferguson for sitting in last night. It was Yom Kippur, the holiest Jewish holiday. And uh, we also had Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. These are called the High Holidays. <coughs> Excuse me, and they're both over. Uh, I don't like leaving the airways, but there are occasions when I when I need to, when I must, and when I want to. Um, but I'm not, you know, taking off to take a trip to uh, Guatemala or Honduras or even better, one of the Caribbean islands. But here we are, and this is the big story. I mean, there's several, but Hunter, listen to this. This just came out an hour ago. This is from Fox News Digital. Hunter Biden received $250,000 wire, ready? Originating in Beijing with the beneficiary address listed as Joe Biden's home. Hello, whoa, wait a minute. But Mark, you don't have any evidence that there was one dollar that Joe Biden took. The money came from Hunter's China-backed business partners, writes Brooke Singman. It's an exclusive. Hunter Biden received wires originating in Beijing for more than a quarter of a million dollars from Chinese business partners during the summer of 2019. Wires that listed the Delaware home of Joe Biden as the beneficiary address for the funds Fox News Digital has learned. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer has been investigating the Biden family dealings and Joe Biden's alleged involvement in those ventures. Just reading what they wrote. As part of the investigation, Comer subpoenaed financial records related to a specific bank account and received records of two wires originating from Beijing, China, and linked to BHR Partners. That's the joint venture between Hunter Biden's Rosemont Seneca and Chinese investment firm Bohai Capital. BHR Partners is a Beijing-backed private equity firm controlled by Bank of China Limited, a.k.a. the Communist Party of China. Hunter Biden sat on the board of directors of BHR Partners. The first wire sent to Hunter Biden, dated July 26, 2019, was for $10,000 from an individual named Ms. Wang Yi. There is a Ms. Wang Yi listed on the website for BHR Partners. It is unclear if the wire came from that Wang Yi. The second wire transfer sent to Hunter Biden, dated August 2, 2019, was for $250,000 from Li Zhengxing, also known as Jonathan Lee, <clears throat> the CEO of BHR Partners, and Ms. Tan Ling. The committee is trying to identify Ling's role. The beneficiary for the wires is listed as the Robert Hunter Biden with the address 1209 Barley Mill Road in Wilmington, Delaware, that address is the main residence of Joe Biden. But Joe doesn't know what's going on. See, You can't prove that he does. Comer and the House Oversight Committee have obtained bank records as part of their investigation, revealing the Biden family and their business associates received millions of dollars from oligarchs in Russia, Ukraine, Romania, Kazakhstan during the Obama administration. Fox News Digital has also learned that the committee has records revealing that from 2014 to 2019, the Biden family and their associates received $24 million, $24 million in farm payments, $15 million to the Bidens, $9 million for their business associates, $4 million more than previously known. Do you know, by the way, before I go on in this really crucial story, it's big time. I'm sure CNN, MSNBC, CBS, NBC, ABC, and all the rest of the crap networks, I'm sure that they're going to lead with this. It'll be a marquee headline in the news. I'm sure it'll be right across the top of the New York Times and the Washington Post. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. As it gets closer and closer and closer to Joe. That's right, him. Committee aides told Fox News Digital that the beneficiary addresses are either the address listed to the recipient account or listed by the individual sending the wire. It is unclear based on the wire records who listed the address. Does it matter? And by the way, 
didn't Joe get regular statements or anything? Now, I explained on Friday, and I thought it was an absolutely superb, fabulous, and brilliant statement. I'm no special pleader for Menendez, Bob. Could be a crook through and through, for all I know. But I'm very skeptical of prosecutors these days. And it happens that Menendez, as the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate, is actually anti-Iran and anti a number of these dictatorships that Joe Biden has played wet kiss with, may I say, or hair smell with, or whatever. Oh, Mark, you're a conspiracy. I'm not a conspiracy at all. Now they issued search warrants. They went into his savings deposits in his banks. They went to his home, his wife's clothes. They found money in the clothes. They found that. Wow. They're very aggressive, don't you think, Mr. Producer? Tell me, how many search warrants have been issued against any of the Biden family members? Exactly zero. How many subpoenas have been issued by the Department of Justice? As far as we know, exactly zero. How many investigators are looking into Joe Biden right now related to any of this? Exactly zero. You might even remember in the Hunter Biden situation, an assistant United States attorney committed an act of obstruction when the IRS was going after some locker, wherever the hell it was, with documents in it. They wanted to get access to it, involving Hunter, perhaps other of the fantastic family members. And she tipped off Hunter Biden's lawyers. So I want you to compare how Joe Biden is treated with how Menendez is treated. Completely differently. Even though Menendez is a Democrat, but he's an out-of-favor Democrat. And of course, they're demanding his resignation. The Democrats are lining up because he's running for re-election. And they don't want him to run for re-election. They're afraid he'll lose. Remember what I said, both in the book and repeatedly here. You have to understand the Democrat Party by looking through the lens, the lens of power. It is a party that is monopolizing our culture, our politics, and our economy, as autocratic parties do. So Menendez is dispensable, especially if you're counting on deep blue New Jersey to hold on to that seat. And by the way, as a footnote, I make a prediction Look, my predictions are worth whatever they're worth. But if Chris Christie finally takes a little smelling sauce and realizes, or in his case a lot, that he can't become president, maybe he'll decide. Maybe he'll decide he's going to run for the Senate in New Jersey. One never knows. I don't know what the rules are there, but the GOP or the limits under the election laws there, who knows? But I would point that out. Now, Hunter Biden spent a period of time in 2017, 18, and 19 living at the Biden family home in Wilmington. It's unclear if he was living at the home at the time of the wire transfers in July and August 2019. The wires were sent just several months after the vice president announced his 2020 presidential campaign. Joe Biden in August 2019 said he never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their business period. So the only person in the entire family who didn't know anything about anything was Joe Biden. And he was the entire reason, the entire reason Hunter Biden and the other family members were able to conduct shakedowns. We have the home as the beneficiary, the old man's on the phone, on the speaker. Hey, hey, how are you? Who's that son? I can't tell you, Daddy. We have him in meetings. We have him in outings with the business partners. We have the business partners and his staff involved. The only one who doesn't know anything, Joe Biden. Isn't that convenient? No subpoenas, no warrants, no nothing. 